it's Kelly from Soy and Shade. Thank you for joining me. Today I am making a loaf of soap using fresh raspberry from Aroma. And as the name suggests, it's a really fresh, sweet raspberry scent with green notes to it as well. It does have 0.37% vanillin to it, but I'm hoping a little bit of titanium dioxide can hold the discoloring at bay. And I'm also going to do some other colors in, including a little bit of raspberry soda, we're going to do a little bit of Caribbean and both of those are from My Micro Obsession along with some Cherry Bling which I am mixing with a tiny bit of Nurture Soap Really Red Mica. So we'll do a little bit of a drop swirl or an in the pot swirl I haven't quite decided yet. And then for the top of this soap I have some raspberry embeds and I'm going to do a little bit of piping as well. So as always in my bucket here I have my oils which I've got sitting at about 27 degrees Celsius and in my other pot here I have my lye water which I have got my tussar silk dissolved into. I will be pouring my lye water into my bucket of oils, mixing it up and then splitting it out for some colours. which I will be using to do my piping. I am going to go and save myself a little bit for green and a little bit for my flowers and I'm actually going to go and weigh this out to make sure I have got enough for my piping. to do with my colours um, is do a in the pot swirl of the two pinks and then I'm going to drop swirl the green in afterwards and as you can see that green goes a really um, horrible sort of green colour as opposed to that nice bright but once this actually saponifies it will go into that nice bright green again this um, pink this raspberry I decided it was it wasn't quite different enough from my other colour so I added a little bit of the titanium dioxide into it just to um, make it a little bit um, whiter and then this color has come up perfect for raspberries this is that cherry bling and a little bit of the really red mica in there and it has come up that sort of really perfect raspberry color so what we're going to do is get these um, spatulas out of here I am going to drop swirl my pinks into my red bucket and then pour into my mold and I'm going to try not to make too much mess while I do it. And by pouring up nice and high that um, soap batter will drop down into the bottom of the bucket but just in case I'm going to leave just a little bit in the jug there in case I've got too much white at the bottom I can pour a little bit more colour in and I'm going to just pour from the middle of my mould and then let the pour do the rest of the work and I can see we've got a lot of white there now so I'm going to scrape these buckets into my white bucket so we can get a bit more of colour all the way through to the top 
and I'm not going to save any of this soap in the jugs because I'm going to do a pipe top on the top of this soap. Okay, so I'll finish scraping those out in just a minute. This is staying somewhat fluid for me, but it is also just that slightly little bit thick. That is looking like a nice raspberry coolie through some custard or something there. It's looking really nice. It does smell good too. Now that I've got that almost full, I'm going to pour my green, just a little bit of it through. I'm going to give it a bit of a stir first just to really loosen that up. And I'm pouring from quite high because I want it to kind of swirl all the way through there. I'll just get a bit more out. But I didn't want so much green in here. I just wanted enough to kind of get the idea that you've got green leaves. All right. And I am now going to scrape out the rest of the bucket actually I might put that in with my piping rather than ruin it too much I'm going to scrape out the rest of this bucket and then I'll come back and do the piping so I've been putting off making this um, fresh raspberry soap even though I've had the idea in my head for quite some time I've been looking for that perfect mold to make some raspberries to go on the top of this soap and I just couldn't find that perfect mold. I had a go at making my own mold. I did a search on YouTube and I found the instructions on how to make silicon molds using the silicon that you purchase from the hardware stores that you would use in say the bathroom or the kitchen or something like that. And I did make myself a mold and this is the one that I made. Um, I'm really not very happy with it. It wasn't cheap to make. It took two tubes of silicon to make a mould of this size. So here in Australia that cost me $20 using the cheapest silicon I could find. I thought that I would use frozen raspberries thinking they'd be nice and hard but I found that they just got really soft and mushy and I really didn't get much definition of raspberries in them and a lot of them were squished and not a nice size. So when I got that pinky sill um, silicon which I showed in the last video with the little honeybees, I made myself a pinky sill um, silicon mould using some fresh raspberries which we got from the local market and I came up with these gorgeous looking raspberries. So the pinky sill is not cheap um, for the one kilo pack that I bought which actually makes about two kilos of mold making material I paid 80 Australian dollars and I used about half of it to make this particular mold so that was $40 so yes it does cost more than the other silicon but this has given me much more definition it's going to last longer and I'm much happier with the results from this pinky seal mold so if you are looking to make your own um, silicon molds for something that you know you're going to use repeatedly I highly recommend the pinky seal silicon mold making kits so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wait for this um, bit of soap batter just to set up a little bit more and then I'm going to come back and start piping the top and adding the raspberries to this soap okay so my soap's firming up quite nicely here but my piping is still quite runny so before I get to the point that this is too hard I'm going to start sticking my raspberries in the top I'm basically wanting to make an almost like a raspberry garden sort of thing so I'm just going to put a couple of raspberries randomly around and then once my piping has set up I'll be able to do the rest of it so I'm just going to Keep pushing these in I can feel that it is hardening up so I think it is the right choice to start putting these in so while I'm putting these in I thought I'd let you know a little bit about how and how my business actually came about so I bought my very first candle making kit probably back in I think it was about 2010 
and I bought it from a little, well it's not a little, it's quite a big craft department store here in Australia called Spotlight. It was a disaster. It turned out to be tennis ball yellow. It had hardly any fragrance and it burnt out or drowned itself after its first burn. But I wasn't to be deterred. I did buy several kits after that and I was making candles for myself. I was running another business at the time. I'm a pretty crafty person. If you can craft it, I basically do it. So anything from card making, quilting, I'm about to do some macrame classes as well. So I was running my uh, another business which was based off of card making and it was an online business, a home based shop and all things were going, uh, all was starting to pick up and I was making candles for myself. I then had a couple of um, family and friends ask for me to make them candles too and I started doing that. And then I went round to my grandparents house um, for my nan's birthday and I was sitting with my granddad in the living room and I was telling him about what I'd been doing for the day. And I'd been trying to teach myself how to make lip balms because I decided that I wanted to have another form of income along with my craft business and I thought that I would start selling some body products and I was going to start with lip balms and I was telling my granddad this and I told him about how I was making candles and he then went into a story that I had never heard before and he told me that his grandmother who actually raised him used to make paraffin candles back in the early days and she also used to sell them to other families as well and they were used for lighting the home and he said it would be really nice if I could carry on and make a business out of making candles. Now sadly um, my granddad um, did have leukemia and two weeks later he was admitted into hospital and sadly he did pass away not long after that and it kind of played in my head what he'd said to me about making a business selling candles and that's what I decided to do. I then applied to do some markets and I headed off to markets with some candles and then the business has kind of grown into then going back into the bath and body side of things as well so I started um, making the lip balms and added that to the range then I decided I was going to learn about making some moisturizers and that went into the range. So I'm just going to go and check on this next and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'll get back to telling you a bit about a bit more about my business in just a moment, but for now in my bag here, I have some white soap batter which is set, just set up nicely, I think, and I've got a tip 2D Wilton in here and it's what you would use to do drop flowers and what I'm going to do is hopefully you'll be able to see me do this I'm going to bring my tip down and as I squeeze and push down I'm going to turn my piping bag and get some little flowers on the top of here so I'll just try that on Again, and then depending upon how much space will depend upon how much pressure I'm put on my bag. The more pressure you put onto the bag, the bigger the flower I'll end up with. So I'm going to keep going through like that. So as I was saying, I then started doing my um, moisturizers and lip balms and I added those into the range of products that I had. And at this point I was watching soap making videos but my auntie was making soap and I thought no I won't add soap to the range. But then I also started getting lots of requests from customers to add soap or did I ever intend on adding soap into my product range. Now at the time the, um, I have several people that I love to actually watch on YouTube. Um, one of them is Royalty Soaps and the other is La Fille de la Mer and both of them actually inspired me to start giving it a go at making soaps and then I introduced soap into the range as well and it's been one of the best things I ever did for my business was being inspired by those two to add it and to give it a go 
and my customers have loved having soaps available within all the products as well so that is what I have in my range now I am very lucky my husband is very supportive of me and everything that I do and back in so we moved to um, the Redlands area from Cairns in 2012 I wasn't unhappy in my job that would be the wrong thing to say but I was unhappy working in the city it was taking me an hour and 20 minutes each way to travel to work and about 10% of my pay each day went to travel costs and I really couldn't understand why I was doing that to myself. I also live with PCOS and the travelling that went with going to work in the city was playing havoc on my PCOS. It was making me tired, it was making me grouchy, I really wasn't very happy anymore and in 2014 my husband said I had to give up work and to do what I love to do and so I started running both of my businesses. It became very apparent very quickly that the craft business was now just becoming a hobby and the candle um, business was becoming a big business. So I did end up shutting down my craft business so I could focus on doing what I do now and it has been one of the best things that has ever really happened and I am so happy now and I look forward to actually being able to expand my business even more we have a five-year plan and I hope one day to have a shop but that is probably a good five years away before I can get to that stage but we can all have dreams so that is looking pretty good like that. I'm not going to do any more. What I do have in this bag, and I'm not sure if it's going to be enough of the difference in colour now that I've put these on. Usually with your raspberry plants in the centre of the flower, there's like a, a little green dollop, and that's where your raspberries tend to grow from. So just in the middle of each of my white raspberry flowers I am just piping just a little bit of green hopefully this will actually brighten up a little bit I took some of the green that I had from my leaf mix that I've got and I mixed in some titanium dioxide and I am using well, it doesn't actually say on this one what it is it's like just a small um, star tip that I've got on here just to try and give it that illusion that it's the the start of a raspberry in the center of each of these flowers so I'm going to keep piping these on and then I have a little bit of um, green mixed up in a piping bag with a leaf tip and I'm going to pipe some leaves on here as well and hopefully it will start looking a little bit more like a raspberry bush and then if I need to, I can either add some more raspberries or add some more of these, what I'm hoping are looking like raspberry flowers. So in quite a few videos ago, I did actually say that I wished I had a larger leaf tip and I was in the craft store the other week they were having a big sale and I just went into the baking section to see what they had and I actually found a larger leaf tip. So I now have a 366 Wilton leaf tip in here. And it's one of the biggest leaf tips I've been able to find. And I'm just going to, for now, pipe some leaves on here. And then I'll step back and I'll see if we need to put any more flowers or raspberries anywhere in here. So I told you a little bit about how my business um, started and has grown let me know down in the comments if you run your own business and it doesn't have to be a soap making or candle business if you are um, just watching the videos because you enjoy watching people make soap but you run your own business let me know how you, your business came about <music>
Okay, so that is looking pretty good at, as it is now. And what I've got in one of the Nurture Soap glitter sprays, I have got some of the Blizzard Mica or a synthetic glitter. And I am just going to spritz this quite liberally with that mica. I really like the Blizzard. It is so shiny. And when this actually dries, that green is really going to pop. So what I'll do is I'll bring you down for a closer look of fresh raspberry. So here is fresh raspberry. It is looking really pretty with all of that shiny mica. And as this saponifies overnight, that green should really brighten up and hopefully it will start to look a lot more like a raspberry bush. So I'm going to leave this sit here for about 18 to 24 hours and then I'll come back and we'll have a look at what we've got on the inside. So here is raspberry lemonade all set up. As you can see that green has gone into a nice bright green and we have some gorgeous marbling effects down the side of this soap so I can't wait to get it cut and see what we've got on the inside as well. It is smelling really nice. The best way I can describe this, and it's probably a very Australian way of describing it, is it smells just like Alan's Red Frog Lollies. And it's just really, really nice now that it's set. So I am just going to cut straight down. I'm going quite slowly on the top here because of all that melt and pour. And I can feel a bit of resistance. It has actually been about 36 hours since I made this soap because we went and visited family yesterday so it has set up that little bit harder than what I like to cut them at but we are getting through it almost there there it goes okay so let's take a look and see what we've got and here is the inside of fresh raspberry and you've got that little raspberry patch on the top with some flowers, leaves and some raspberry embeds. And the swirl on that's coming up really pretty as well. So we'll grab the next piece. And you've got just enough green in those bars to tie it into the top of the soap as well. So again, I'm very pleased with how this one has turned out. I hope you've enjoyed watching me make the fresh raspberry soap. Don't forget to let me know down in the comments below how you started, if you run your own business, how you actually started it. And if you did enjoy the video, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down back below. I will get back to you with any questions that you may have. I do bring out a weekly video, so if you would like to make sure that you don't miss those, hit the subscribe button and the little bell and it will let you know the next time I bring a video to you. So thank you for watching. Until next week, have a good one.